So I'm about to start working on my wedding dress. I've decided I'm going to try to sew my own wedding dress. It's a very scary prospect. I have been procrastinating actually doing it because the prospect of it scares me and kind of stresses me out a little bit. I'm really excited about trying to make it and I want to see like if I can do it. But I'm also scared because I'm like, oh, what if it doesn't turn out to be like my dream dress and all of that. But I have a pattern. Um, it's a butterick pattern. Basically, it's um, based off of Kate Middleton's dress that, oh, I was like in middle school when Prince William and Kate Middleton got married. But I remember waking up so early <laughs> and watching the wedding and I just... I loved her dress so much. I bought this pattern back when I was in middle school because it came out in better. I was like, oh no, what if they like discontinue the pattern by the time I get married? Uh, so I went ahead and bought it, um, thinking like, I won't grow that much more. It has various sizes. So that's the pattern I'm using. I've, you know, held on to it for like the past 10 years. <laughs> and uh, now I'm going to, I want to make it, but I have a little bit of my own design that I want to put into it. Um, I don't want to make an exact replica, of course, um, fabric choices also help with that. So now I'm going to do a mock-up, and I'm going to make my mock-up out of thrifted bed sheets <laughs> and some tool, because that's really cheap stuff, and I don't want to spend too much on a mock-up, because I hate, I hate making mock-ups in general, I really do, but for something this important that I really need a good fit on, I think it's necessary. So here is that almost 10 year old pattern looking pretty good if I do say so myself. It's just been sitting in my basement waiting for this day. It does say that it is advanced or plus difficile and I don't think I uh, quite heeded its warning quite well enough and we'll, we'll see about that as we go through this mock-up video but right now I am just going to cut out all of the pattern pieces that I need I will be using all of the pattern pieces from this pattern uh, the overlay the bodice the skirt and of course I'm going to make a few of my own changes to the pattern but this is going to be my base pattern so I'm going to go ahead and cut that out Of course, no project is complete without my little helper, Lucky. She is such a good fabric guard. Who's a good fabric guard? Who's a good fabric guard? Yes, you are. Now, the skirt pattern pieces were so long that I actually had to tape pieces together. And right now, as you can see, this is one of the skirt panels. But this isn't even, like, the train skirt panel. This is just the side back. So, it's halfway of a train but it's not even the longest piece. That one was actually like three pieces that I had to take to tape together, which of course I was super excited about. I love a good long train. Here I'm cutting out the bodice pieces. So there's the front and the side and the back and then the second back piece. So I'm cutting all of those out and uh, I am of course using my favorite uh, mock-up material, which is thrifted bed sheets. So yes, this this mock-up wedding dress will be made out of thrifted bed sheets and some old tool. And I guess I could have gotten nicer fabric, but why? Because this is just a mock-up that I'm going to end up taking apart to make my actual wedding dress. Now, I, I also mentioned that some old tool. So here we are doing the overlay part. Uh, no, it is not lace, but uh, tool is so much cheaper than even bad lace. So I... I'm going to try to use that to do the overlay pieces. So there's the front piece, the bodice overlay, and then of course the sleeves, which I love. I love a good sleeve on a dress. Thank you. 
here I am pinning all of the bodice pieces together. So there's the front and then there's kind of like the side front that I'm going through here. And I like how this is going to be a very fitted bodice. You can already tell that. And of course, that's something that I most definitely want. And it's going to have a nice sweetheart neckline, which is, I think, lovely and very romantic, very, very fit for a wedding. So as I was going through and I kept pinning things, you know, to the bodice, I began to wonder, you know, is it, is this too big? Is it too long? It kind of felt too long. And I've actually had this problem with another better pattern that I did when I made my first formal dress for my sorority's formal. And it was too long. Like they had like one extra piece in the back that just didn't need to be there. And I kept wondering, like, is, is it like, uh like a placket or like like what is what is the reason for this but I thought you know it's okay no the pattern I'll trust the pattern and I sewed it all together thinking that the pattern knew what it was talking about uh, so that is what I am doing here of course on my brother's sewing machine this is actually the first and only sewing machine that I have ever owned and it, I think it's fun that I get to use it for my wedding dress but yeah, here I am being very skeptical that uh, it's going to fit my mannequin, Mahilda. In case you didn't know, my dress form's name is Mahilda. It, she came with that name. Uh, but yes, as I, I was right, this is not going to fit. It's too big. They're, they're like, they're, why? Why are there those back pieces there? But then I can't just get rid of them because then there's like a two inch gap between them. So why? Like, if I pulled it really, really tight, like, it kind of fits. But I don't want to be, like, struggling to breathe on my wedding day. No one wants that. And then I'm also going to have a lining in the one that I'm going to make official. Like, the official dress. So, I was like, no, we're, we're not playing around with that. So, I decided that I am just going to have to basically redraft the back pattern. And that's what I'm doing here. So, I ripped apart... Uh, the bodice I took off that one little piece in the back that is unnecessary and then I took the second piece the second side piece or second back side piece and then I extended it by one inch which is all that I need for me for for my body so that's what I did here you can see the outline and the pins that I'm cutting out now so I really feel like I am kind of reinventing the pattern already to make it even more my own Alrighty now that we have the new and improved back pattern piece. Let's see how it fits Mathilda. I am already feeling much more confident about this and hopefully my new back pattern piece that I drafted will work out perfectly. So it doesn't have any boning in it yet so it's not going to stay up perfectly well but it does fit. Yay! So now that I have the bodice done, let's do the overlay. Uh, now you can see I'm kind of fighting uh, with the ceiling fan uh, here. It keeps trying to blow things away. Uh, that's a that's a fun game that I like to play with my fabric and my ceiling fan. Uh, <laughs> but when you're sewing in the south, sometimes you have some really hot days, and you know you want to be comfortable. So you just you just gotta fight with the ceiling fan. The tool itself was also a bit difficult to work with. It was not um, 
always the most well-behaved of fabric, but I tried to wrestle it into some darts here for the front bodice overlay. So now it's time to pin together the sleeves. I I just love sleeves on wedding dresses. I think they look so beautiful and elegant and I just oh, I just I love them and I'm so happy that my wedding dress is going to have sleeves, hopefully. <laughs> you know, if I if I make it in it all works out. But the plan is for it to have sleeves. Uh it's really hard to find a wedding dress nowadays that has sleeves like a good good sleeve coverage some of them have that kind of like opaque sleeve like i guess tool but to have like a good lace sleeve is hard to find so now i'm going to attach the sleeves into the rest of the overlay and then try to get the bodice part attached to the overlay part which is seeming to be rather complicated and also at this point you probably have noticed that i have not referenced the instructions at all and uh that's kind of what i i don't really like to uh look at the pattern instructions sometimes i think they are just more confusing and i like to put things together like a 3d puzzle especially when i'm not going to follow all of their rules and instructions for a mock-up i mean i already eliminated one pattern piece in the back entirely and had to redraft my own part of a pattern piece so uh yeah i didn't have a lot of faith in the instructions but also i like didn't even read them so i honestly have no idea if they were good or not Alrighty, so now comes the time to attempt to fit the overlay to Mahilda, and uh, I don't know what the problem with this overlay is, but as you can see, first of all, it's not really laying quite right. Um, the shoulders are just really, really pointy like really pointy and they're not wanting to lay down and they're not wanting to like go farther up on the neck because they're, they're supposed to be pretty high on the neck but this is they're not supposed to lay like this so i'm trying to like pin them and maybe i just have to like cut off the pointy parts and then like sew it back together um the overlay was also way too big just like the bodice pieces were even though i cut it out to my right size that it said it was supposed to be um but it was still it was still way too huge so i had to kind of snip out the back there as well and maybe because it was so big that's why it also wasn't laying right it was honestly just like a whole mess like just just a whole whole mess but here i am attempting to salvage it attempting to drape it drape it onto mahilda to make it work but really my my concern was on the shoulders there uh, I can take things in pretty well, but trying to make something lie flat on a shoulder that didn't want to lay flat was was a problem. So I kind of cut off the pointy piece and then tried to re-sew it um, that you can kind of see there um, to make it lay better. So here we are with attempt number two after some revisions <laughs> and uh, let's see if it fits any better. So uh, it's not looking hopeful with a better fit. In fact, somehow the shoulders are pointing up even worse than before. And I got very frustrated and just balled it up and threw it away. And then I didn't work on my mock-up for weeks because I was just like, how am I going to make that work? And the answer was I wasn't. I switched to a new pattern 
or the overlay and we're going to try to mesh them together so I turn to this Vogue pattern, which obviously is like a knockoff Grace Kelly gown, which of course is another one of my favorite gowns. And Kate Middleton's gown took a lot of inspiration from Grace Kelly's gown. And if you would like to uh, hear more about my design inspo for how I wanted to do my dress, I have a whole nother video about that. So I'm not going to go into it too much here, but please check out that video. I had a lot of fun making that and drawing out my dream wedding dress design. Here I am again cutting out the bodice pieces and it looks so much like the other pieces that I just used from the other pattern, but I'm hoping, crossing my fingers, that they actually fit better because the shoulders look a little bit different. Like there are some minor details that I think is going to make this one better. Hopefully, again, cross your fingers, knock on wood, say a little prayer. Because otherwise, if this wasn't going to work, then I wasn't sure what I was going to do besides like draft my own pattern and I didn't really want to do that when dealing with like the most expensive lace that I'm probably ever going to actually make like I didn't want to like chance with that even though I was going to use uh you know something not as good for the mock-up I also decided part of my problem might have been the tool the tool just was not laying well and it wasn't acting like lace so I actually found this old remnant that I had gotten of lace it's not great lace but of course it's still lace it's still nice but I decided for the cause for the dream wedding dress to make sure we had a good viable mock-up that was going to tell me all of the important things I need to know this lace was going to be used for that and also it just had been sitting in my basement for a long time it was it was a remnant so I that, that I had gone out of fabric store so I think it actually it worked out much better to cut it like even just cutting it i could tell like oh this is going to lay better than that tool <laughs> so part of it might not have been the pattern part of it might have been my fabric choice with it but still it shouldn't have been that pointy on the shoulders but here i am again it's uh the bodice front bodice overlay piece is cut on well, it's like halfway cut on the fold, so you have no seam in the middle, but you do have that lovely deep V uh, going down the neckline, and then it has a couple very nice darts on it, and I just love that shot. I feel so artsy, because that's actually the dart on the back. So then I'm gonna go ahead and sew that down with my sewing machine and then put the front and back pieces together. This is already going so much better than the first overlay attempt. Whew, and I'm so happy that it is. So here comes the moment of truth. Let's try it on Mahilda and see how it's gonna go. All right, looking good, looking good, all right. Lovely, it's still somewhat big in the back, but nothing that I can't fix. I already love how the lace looks over this. And, oh, look at that. Look at that, it's working, it's working. The shoulders are not pointy. It's coming up on the neck like it's supposed to, but of course I don't, I hate things touching my neck. Like I cannot wear turtlenecks. So I'm going to snip that down and we're going to create a wider V for my neckline where nothing is touching my neck. <laughs> So since that overlay worked so well, I'm going to go ahead and officially attach it to the under bodice. Now it's time to make the lace sleeves. And uh, it looks even more elegant with the lace and makes me so happy.
So now it's time to attach the sleeve to the overlay bodice pieces. And I was going through this and it, it didn't seem to be working out that well. It seemed a little small, but apparently there was a reason for that. So I just tried to pin my sleeve to the bodice and I realized I pinned the wrong side of the sleeve to the bodice. This should be this side. Let's try this again. Yep, so we're trying that again. Attaching, you know, the right side of the sleeve to the bodice. But you know, now as I'm attaching the correct side, um, there seemed to be a bit of a problem. There was, there was too much sleeve um, to the point where I felt like, okay, either I'm gonna have to cut this or what if we did a gather for the sleeve and create just, just a little bit of a poof sleeve, you know, just like a little hint of a poof princess sleeve. We're not going 80s, massive exaggerated poof, but just what if we did a, a little poof? Those kind of were like trending a little bit uh, in the past couple of years, like a poof sleeve that makes it a little bit more of a square shoulder, but I, didn't, I don't want like an exaggerated poof by any means, but I do like a little princess poof. It seems very elegant, seems very royal. It also makes it a little bit more mine, a little bit more unique as I want this to be my dress and not a recreation of somebody else's dress. So I like having these little points of differences that make it uniquely mine. So here I am, I just sewed in the gathering stitch and now I'm going to gather up my lace sleeve and pin it into the bodice. All right, so I'm so happy with how this is looking so far. Now, I had kind of pinned it on the outside, but now I'm going to tuck in the, the flap inside the excess fabric from the overlay because, again, don't want anything touching my neck, so I'm going to go ahead and, and kind of pin that down on the right side. And I I am ecstatic with how this is looking so far. This is This is, this has the potential to become my dream dress. Now the bag is a little bit of a mess at the moment, <laughs> but hopefully it'll get better. Right now it's still, it's pinned closed on my dress form. It's not, it doesn't have, you know, a way to hold itself together. So it will look better again, of course, once I put in proper closings. But I have been focusing so much on the back. What about the skirt? The skirt, that is where so much of the drama happens. But also, skirts are generally um, easier than bodices. So I started with the the bodice, and then I thought it would get easier with the skirt. And it, it kind of did. Um, just putting the skirt pieces together. I'm still using the original pattern for all of the skirt pieces. It had a fuller skirt than the Vogue pattern did. So I'm still using that that original butterick pattern of uh, the, the take on Kate Middleton's dress. Uh, there was just a lot of sewing, lots of long straight seams to get all of these pieces to go together. And then I was just kind of playing it around with it on my body just to kind of see how it would look draped on me and what kind of style of skirt I want. So Kate Middleton had these giant box pleats. Grace Kelly had a very flat front and then a very gathered bag. So I don't really want box pleats. I wanted something fuller. I wanted to have more body and drama. Uh, box pleats to me seem very, um, they're not that whimsical. Uh, so I decided, I think I liked knife pleats. 
But then also while I was playing around with it, I decided, you know what, there's like this very small front piece on the skirt. And what if we did a fun overlay on that front piece? Because that would, again, give it some more drama, some more interest, and also make it more uniquely mine. So I wanted to see how that would look. So I went ahead and seam ripped that one small front piece out. And then for this, I used tool because I didn't have any more lace. And I thought, okay, the tool might actually work for this. It's just It just needs to go straight over a skirt piece. It shouldn't have too much objections to that. And it'll give me an idea of, do I like having something in the front middle of my dress? So I went ahead, um, again, seam ripped that front panel piece out and then cut some blue tool to fit on it. And then I, well, just have to re-sew it in to see how I liked that look. Okay, I really like it. I, I really, really like having something in that front panel, panel piece because otherwise it's just like this awkward small front panel piece. Why isn't it just part of the other ones? So this, it feels like this was the intended purpose all along and I was just the person who saw it and, and realized the true vision. Now, of course, I did say I didn't like box pleats, but because I have this front panel piece now, I did two box pleats on either side, so I had some nice fabric. Um, I don't know, I just, I call it like a princess skirt, is, you know, when you have like that front piece, and then, you know, you have some like skirt just kind of folded on top of it, so it almost looks like you have like a whole underskirt and then an overskirt. Well, I'm kind of cheating that <laughs> by just pleating the fabric over on the top. Uh, and then I knife pleated it directionally going out to give it some more body a nice whimsical look and I really liked the knife pleats again. It makes it unique in, in mine So now I'm going to go ahead I have all of the skirt pinned down and now it's time to attach the bodice to the skirt But I ran into a problem. I didn't have enough skirt and it might have been because I pleated it differently than it said to do it in the book but I don't know, because I have lost all faith in this pattern. I have already, like, taken out a whole back section of the bodice, and it's still not working. So I, I needed four more inches, but of course I'm going to pleat that. And it takes about, like, three inches to do a fabric, because I had it one inch pleats. And then there's three layers of fabric that go into a pleat. So three times four is 12. I need a 12 inch strip of fabric to complete my skirt. And of course, this being the mock-up, it's, it's going to just be a 12 inch piece of fabric. But when I make my actual dress, 
it'll just be included into one of those back skirt panels. So there, it won't be like an awkward strip when I actually make my dress. So here I am just with, again, thrifted bed sheets. Love those things. I'm pretty sure it's cotton. And uh, one of the things that I love about thrifted bed sheets and just, you know, cotton in general is you can snip it and then rip it. And it's just so satisfying. And you get a nice straight grain. You get a nice straight piece of fabric. And you didn't really have to work all that hard. It's fantastic. So here I am adding that strip of fabric onto the skirt. I'm going to pin it, and then I'm going to sew it, and then I'm going to pleat it, and then hopefully we'll have enough skirt to attach the bodice to. All right, so thank goodness <laughs> my addition of 12 inches of fabric worked. We now perfectly lined up the bodice and the skirt, sewed that together, and now I can make an actual dress and put a back seam in. Uh, right now I'm going to cut out the hook and eyes, the hook, well, hook and eye tape. I love that stuff. I love hook and eye tape, so it only seemed proper and fitting to use that for my wedding dress as I use that for so many other things and it kind of gives a flair for the historical rather than putting in something like a zipper which I never put zippers in my dresses so I'm also not that good at it <laughs> and I'm just going to pin up the rest of the back of that wedding dress and then sew it and then I'm going to almost get to the chance we're almost to the part where I'm going to try it on but I'm so excited and also nervous So the last thing I need to do to make the mock-up wearable is to put in my hook and eye tape. And then, and then I get to officially try it on. And I really hope I like how it looks. So, here it is.
I was really happy, really, really, and truly happy with how this mock-up turned out. Except for <laughs> when I tried it on, the sleeves were a little baggy and I, I really didn't want that. I wanted a nice close fit, especially because I had these little points that came down on my hand and I wanted it to, to stay really nice. So I wanted to get it as tight as I possibly could was not having to put in like little buttons or something because that sounded like a lot of tedious work that I didn't want to do. So I wanted to get it as tight as humanly possible but still be able to have my hand come in and out. So for the first seven inches of the sleeve, I was going to take in an inch um, at the top and then kind of gradually taper it out um, until basically it came right to below my elbow because I also wanted to be able to move my elbows. I wanted to be able to move in my wedding dress, but also I wanted to have it look nice and fit it. So there was some experimentation going on there um, as I you know, attempted to fit it onto myself and then pin it um, for, for cutting here. So with that, it was then time to take the entire dress apart so I could cut it out of the good fabric. Thank you so much for coming along on this wedding journey with me. Next video I will be releasing will be about picking out the fabric for my wedding dress. So please be sure to hit like and subscribe so you will be notified. Ring that bell if you want to be like super notified. And until next time.